This month on Images. Math major Jose Macias figures why COD is his number one choice. Promising students and proud donors meet at the scholarship reception. And add excitement to your holiday menu, from appetizers to dessert, with two unique recipes from COD's chef Chris Thielman. All of that and more on this edition of Images. Happy Holidays and welcome to Images. I'm your host, Rio Almaria, Admissions Representative at College of DuPage. Our program is a great way to stay connected with everything happening at your community college. Why COD? A simple question with so many possibilities for answers. Mathematics major Jose Macias explains how College of DuPage factors into his equation for educational success. It's always that bottom college that you always had to put, you know, it's like if you can't make it to these, now you have to go to community college. So it's kind of viewed as, you know, underestimated or, I mean, some people think that because it's just like, you know, judging a book by its cover. But after I actually gone through like touring and actually viewing the college, it actually, it, it looks amazing and there's so many opportunities they could do here and, you know, achieve that people shouldn't really underestimate it. So that's why I decided to take the opportunity to see where I'll go with COD. My love of mathematics, um, it was actually from my high school teacher. Um, his name was Mr. Webb and, you know, I wasn't a really big fan of math. It was just like, I hated it. It was just like, you know, why understand numbers, you know? You're not going to use them in life, you know? That's my mentality. But he actually showed me a way you know, of making it really simple and he actually using real world problems that it would be more efficient, like you actually use in your career. So after going through that, um, it actually made me actually like math and I started loving it. And then I actually started pursuing math as a career um, when I was getting, going to senior year of high school and now um, going to pursue it as well. I mean, the math teachers are a lot different here. Um, I mean, they still care, um, but they're a lot more strict and they're amazing. A lot of them have their masters, you know, PhDs. I had a PhD uh, professor, which is amazing. And, it really surprises me how they, their love of math is, is being shared with us. Professor Miller, I love that guy. He, he's hilarious. He is one of those teachers that you will think about later in life. Someone asks you what's your favorite teacher, you will, you know, he's automatically one of my favorite ones. He, what he does, he loves it so much, you know, and he would do anything for it, you know. He comes into class happy, you know, and he shares his love for speech to his students, you know. And I kind of want to do that with my students. And he kind of mentored me of like, you know, always be open, open-minded. A Latino Ethnics Awareness Association. Um, my involvement was actually starting because of last year. Um, actually, my sister was kind of telling me to go to Sierra Liz Jimenez. I'm like, I don't want to be in the clubs. I know I'm not really that involved right now. And Leo kind of persuaded me because they did a car show, they did dance. They were a little more open and a little open and like kind of big ideas. I'm like, all right, I want to put my myself in this. And I was voted public affairs uh, relations last year and now I'm vice president. And my progression throughout the club is, it's amazing. Um, I never saw a club so involved, you know, trying to be involved with other clubs and throughout COD, they've done such big events, you know, we're going to host a dance soon. Um, and, and this is so friendly, you know, I, COD is such a friendly campus. I personally believe COD is an amazing school. I'm really happy I chose uh, COD besides like Iowa or U of I, you know, it's, it's, it's a school that I will never regret going. What's your why? Discover it at College of DuPage. For more information about enrolling and taking advantage of all that COD has to offer, please contact the admissions office. Visit them on the web at cod.edu. Exciting things are happening at Waterleaf. Hi, I am Jean Piolo, General Manager of Waterleaf Restaurant, and I invite you to come to Waterleaf for a lunch that is sophisticated and relaxed. We are now offering a new affordable and, of course, delicious lunch menu with family items, all prepared with a special touch, certain to make your dining experience far from your average lunch. Savor or take on some of our favorite dishes. Macaroni and cheese, cup salad with your choice of dressing, soup and salad combo, 
beef brisket sandwich with caramelized onion and horseradish mayonnaise. A trio of sliders consisting of barbecue pork with crispy onion, fried chicken with pickles, and a filet with blue cheese, plus much, much more. Join us for lunch at Waterleaf and experience modern fine dining, where the focus is on great food and service in the comfort of a down-to-earth, informal setting. I am looking forward to welcoming you. You will love it. Looking for an easy yet impressive appetizer for your holiday spread? COD's chef Chris Thielman livens your entertaining repertoire with a recipe for spicy shrimp crostini. Welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with Chris. My name is Chris Thielman. You're at the College of DuPage. Today we're going to be making a spicy shrimp crostini. It's got three basic parts. It's very, very simple. One thing I wanted to uh, say before we begin, these uh, appetizers that we're going to make are very, very simple. This one, it will only take a small amount of effort and you don't have to add all the ingredients. You can add a few more. It's entirely up to you. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is make our crostinis. Now we've got 10 shrimp and so we need to make 10 crostinis. And so what you're going to do is you're going to cut your French bread so that you have 10 of them, and I like them just slightly bigger like this. I like them on the bias just a little bit so they have a little more surface area because I think they're a little more interesting for the guests to eat. So we've got 10 slices, and then what we're gonna do is take some olive oil and drizzle a little olive oil on each one. Now this is a little trick of the trade that we do all the time. If you've noticed, we put olive oil in a ketchup squeeze bottle and that's because it makes it very easy to apply to pans or rolls or whatever you want to put it on. All right, and then we're going to take some garlic and we're going to drizzle just a little bit of garlic on top, just a teeny bit, maybe, oh, I don't know, hardly any, just a touch. Then you're going to take some Parmesan cheese, sprinkle the Parmesan on top, and then this is going to go in a 400 degree oven for approximately five minutes until they're golden brown. That's all you have to do. So this is going to be the base of the shrimp crostini. And now for the second and third part of this recipe, we're going to saute the shrimp and make the sauce. So I'm going to do two things at once, and you could do either one of these the night before if you wanted. So what I've done is I added one cup of heavy cream to my sauce pot, and I'm also going to add two ounces of what is called demi-glace, D-E-M-I-G-L-A-C-E, demi-glace. This is a pre-prepared product that we make in the field, but you can now bake, uh, you can now buy it at the store, which I've seen. So it's uh, something that's new, which is really excellent. Now we're going to take some olive oil, add it to the pan, and we are going to add our marinated shrimp, which has been peeled and deveined. You can buy the shrimp just like this, already peeled and deveined. So it's very, very convenient. And I marinated it overnight. Again, if you did not want to marinate this overnight, it's not a problem at all. You don't have to marinate it overnight. So you could just saute it, and you can see that this will take approximately one minute on each side to cook. So it's very, very fast. So now it's ready to be turned because my saute pan was nice and hot. And remember, seafood is done when it reaches approximately 145 degree internal temperature. So that's not really hot. A lot of people overcook their seafood all the time. So I never recommend that. So our sauce here is cooking and I have the heat up on medium high, as you can see, and so it is reducing the cream. So what we're shooting for is to reduce the cream down to a thick consistency. This shrimp is now done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, a, a small plate and we are going to move the shrimp out of here because we don't want it to continue to cook. So our shrimp is now done and that's ready for us to build them. And now we are going to take our sauce and we're going to let this cook for approximately 
mm, five minutes or so. Okay, about five minutes have passed and our sauce has reduced down to a slightly thick consistency. We don't want the sauce really thin because then it'll just run right off the crostini. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our finished browned crostini right here and we're going to put them on a plate. Again, if you wanted to do this a day ahead, not a problem at all. Remember, today is all about fast, easy, tasty appetizers. So now we're going to take our shrimp and we're going to place a shrimp on top of each one. And if you want to use your fingers, please feel free to use your fingers. I'm on camera, so that's why I'm using the tongs. I always use my fingers. All right. So this makes 10, which is a pretty good amount. And there we go. Now, it's all about the garnish. So what we have to do is we have to garnish this so it finishes it off nicely. Now we're going to take our sauce right here, which has been reducing. We have chives for garnish. We have some sliced thin prosciutto, which I sauteed until it's very crisp. And we have lemon that we're going to put just a little bit of zest on top. So the first thing I'm going to do is put just a little bit of sauce on top of each one of these. Now remember, if you wanted to serve the sauce on the side, you could. The nice thing about cooking is you can do whatever you like with all of this stuff. It's really a, a wonderful field. So you can see it's only about, oh, one or two teaspoons each. And now we're gonna take our garnish. This is a bit of chive, adds a little color. All I did was chop it up, very simple. And again, if you wanna get creative and go like that on the plate, hey, get creative, do that on the plate, looks great. People think you planned it. And then we're gonna put a little prosciutto on top. The prosciutto is going to add just a touch of saltiness and an interesting flavor. And then last but not least, we're going to put a bit of a lemon zest on it. Now, I use a microplane most of the time, but a lot of people don't own one. So what I did was I pulled out the old box grater here because almost everyone has one of these in their kitchen. And so all you're going to do is take and put a little bit of zest on the top. Not a lot, just a little bit. It again adds a little bit of flavor because basically what you're shooting for is layers of flavor. So you've got a crostini with garlic and parmesan, you've got some shrimp, you've got a little bit of prosciutto, just a touch of lemon and a little chive. So there you go, fast, easy appetizer. Again, you can prepare most of this a day ahead and then finish it the day of the party. Thanks a lot, have a great day. Enjoy your crostinis. Is it better to give or receive? When it comes to scholarships for students who might not be able to pursue their dreams without financial assistance, the answer is both. College of DuPage's scholarship reception is an opportunity for scholarship recipients to meet donors and an opportunity for donors to see the faces of those students whose lives have been changed because of their contributions. I want to tell all the donors that are here and the foundation members, what you're doing is you're changing people's lives. I'm so overwhelmed by the generosity that I cannot share my story. I just wanted the opportunity to say thank you. College is tough, but this scholarship has taught me that hard work definitely pays off in the end. It's relieved a lot of stress from my life as far as Where's this money going to come from? How am I going to do this? I have these dreams. I want to help the world, but how can I do this? This is just uh, icing on the cake to be able to not have to worry about the financial aspect of it. And I'm very proud of my daughter. She's maintained a, a perfect 4.0 average, and um, I just... <laughs> the scholarship reception is really an opportunity for donors and scholars to meet and celebrate their successes and donations um, here at College of DuPage. I think connecting the scholars with their donors is really just sort of the conclusion of making um, dreams a reality. Um, in the sense for donors, many times they give because they have the opportunity and are blessed to give back. We started our scholarship because of uh, my past experience at the College of DuPage and were it not for the College of DuPage, I would not have had the opportunity to go on to 
achieve a four-year degree and to um, have the opportunities to get involved in the business I did. And, um, it all goes back to uh, one class at College of DuPage, which was a, a turning point in my life. I'd like to address the, the donors to say, you can see what your money has done. It's absolutely gorgeous to listen to these people and see how we have helped them. For the scholars, they're having something fulfilled and that for many of them, they may not be able to go to college or may not be able to attend as many classes as they would like to finish sooner to get out into the workforce. The scholarships they're given is really helping their dreams become reality. I would really like to say thank you for the opportunity. And in fact, if it wasn't for these scholarships, I wouldn't actually be here this semester. And the experiences just keep coming and coming and allowing for you to open yourself to these opportunities and step right in and take charge. And so I appreciate that. You guys are really fueling leaders for the future, which is something that's really important. Thanks to both of you, I can actually do this and become the best oncology nurse I can be. You've changed my life and you've given me a future and so much hope and a direction. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. And I did want to spend a moment with you and uh, congratulate all those students who are the recipients of these scholarships that mean so much to you. You made the absolute right choice to come to the College of DuPage. Our students do as well, if not better than the student who went directly out of high school to many of those universities. We have an incredibly talented faculty we have a magnificent physical plant, all designed for one purpose, to educate the people of this great community that we serve. So I'm honored to be able to stand here tonight to thank the donors, to thank the scholars, to thank my colleagues who work here, to thank the Board of Trustees who give up their time to make sure that we have the best college, not community college, that's a given. We have the best college in the state of Illinois, bar none, and I'd say that to anyone at any time, and I'm proud to be able to serve as president. Add an elegant dessert to your holiday celebration, or just find a reason to indulge this season. Coming up next, COD chef Chris Thielman shares his recipe for chocolate raspberry truffles. Exciting things are happening at Waterleaf. Hi, I am Jean Piolo, General Manager of Waterleaf Restaurant, and I invite you to come to Waterleaf for a lunch that is sophisticated and relaxed. We are now offering a new affordable and, of course, delicious lunch menu with family items, all prepared with a special touch, certain to make your dining experience far from your average lunch. Several take on some of our favorite dishes, Macaroni and cheese, cup salad with your choice of dressing, soup pancet combo, beef brisket sandwich with caramelized onion and horseradish mayonnaise, a trio of sliders consisting of barbecue pork with crispy onion, fried chicken with pickles, and a filet with blue cheese, plus much, much more. Join us for lunch at Waterleaf and experience modern fine dining, where the focus is on great food and service in the comfort of a down-to-earth, informal setting. I am looking forward to welcoming you. You will love it. Hello. Welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with Chris. My name is uh, Chris Thielman. I'm a professor at the College of DuPage. I teach culinary and pastry arts. And today we're going to make you a raspberry chocolate truffle. Now raspberry chocolate truffles are relatively easy. Basically, you take cream and chocolate, you melt it together. If you want to add flavoring agents like we're going to today, we're going to add raspberry because we're making raspberry chocolate truffles and a little bit of butter to add a little bit of creaminess and a little more oomph in the flavor and also to soften up the interior of the truffle. If you didn't have butter or something similar inside of the truffle, the inside of the truffle would be very, very hard like a rock and it wouldn't be very pleasant to eat. So this has got two distinct parts to make this recipe. The first part is to take your heavy cream, add it into a pot just like this. Okay, so you don't have to be worried about boiling the heavy cream. It's not a problem. So then we're going to take our chocolate and we're going to turn the heat up 
So it's a little bit higher. And we're going to take our chocolate and we're going to throw it right in. We're going to take our raspberry, raspberry filling, uh, raspberry jam, raspberry preserve, any of those will work just fine, not a problem at all, any kind of raspberry. Uh, I prefer seedless personally, uh, so uh, I would recommend seedless. And what you do is you stir and you get it all melted together. And as you can see, it's starting to melt. And then we're going to add our butter. Okay. And we're going to add our Chambord, which is a raspberry uh, liqueur. If you want to add uh, brandy, add brandy. If you don't want to add any liquor, don't add any. It's really up to you. And so we're going to stir this all together. And I'm going to wait a couple minutes until I add the liquor. So because, it, uh, it's a, uh, because it's so liquid, it has a tendency to uh, not mix in well. So I'm going to wait until the very end to add that. I also don't want to evaporate it away because when you evaporate alcohol, you lose some of the flavor very often. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just stirring and stirring and stirring, and this will only take a couple minutes. And you want to make sure you get everything good and melted together. And then we're going to put it in a pan, and then we're going to throw it in the refrigerator until it sets up, which will take about 20 to 30 minutes or so. So you can see I've got the heat on about medium or so. And I'm just stirring until everything is melted together. Only take just another minute or so, then we'll be all set. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit, make sure it's on low, now that everything is good and melted together. Now I'm going to show you two ways to finish these truffles today. One is very, very simple, very easy. And the other way is just a slightly bit more complicated, but it adds a nice little nuance to the truffle, which I really like. So I'll show you two ways to finish them. And uh, incidentally, you have to melt chocolate for the second way, and everyone loves to melt chocolate, so it's always a lot of fun. And uh, the, uh, the method with the melted chocolate, I recommend, if you can, have a friend help you, because as you'll see, I'll do it by myself. It'll be a little bit messy, but uh, it'll be a lot easier if you have someone to help you. Everything is all melted together. And so now I'm going to add the liqueur and then stir it in. Okay. So now this is ready and we're going to put it into the pan right here. Okay. All right. So get it all out of the pan. And as you can see, we have a, a small pan, not a very large one, because uh, I'm going to scoop this with a, a little ice cream scoop after it chills up. So we're going to take this and we're going to put this in the refrigerator for about mm, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes right in there, depending on how hot you got it. And so all we want to do is get it set and then uh, we're going to scoop it. So be right back. Okay, it has been about 30 minutes and our truffle filling has chilled in the refrigerator. So what I've done is I've gotten a small ice cream scoop. So if you like smaller truffles, smaller scoop, larger truffles, larger scoop, your choice. So all you do is scrape lightly across the top and you'll fill up the scoop. And then if it needs to be finished off so it looks perfect, just roll it in your hands just like this and you'll have perfect looking truffles. Okay. So uh, what you, you know, I would say the secret on this recipe is if this gets too cold, the filling, let it warm up just a little bit. Because if it's really, really cold, you're going to find that it's extremely hard to scoop. Okay? So I let this, uh, uh, I took it out of the fridge. It was chilled, all set. But then I let it warm up for about five or ten minutes at room temperature. And so now it is just barely scoopable. And you can see it's very easy to shape into a small round ball. Okay. Now, next part is, I'll do one more. Okay, I'm going to show you two ways to finish this. Okay, and as you can see, I've got gloves on because it's going to get a little messy. If you don't want to wear gloves, don't worry about it. All right, so there's two ways to do this. Number one is to take the truffle and we're going to throw it in cocoa powder, just like this. Okay, so we'll do half of them. So we'll do four. Take a fork and just pick it up and turn it in the cocoa powder. Okay, obviously you can do this by hand without a problem. I'm just trying to be just a little bit neater since we're on camera. 
And you take this and then roll it off to the side. And now you've got a truffle that has been dusted in cocoa powder. Okay. So that's one way. You can also do this with powdered sugar. It'll work just great with powdered sugar too. I personally like the cocoa powder. It's a little more traditional, a little more uh, French, if you will. Okay, now here's the second way to do them, which is really cool. Take a little bit of chocolate, any kind of melted chocolate you want. You want to use white chocolate, um, milk chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, it doesn't matter, okay? And also, since we're talking about chocolate, the number that you see on the package, if it says 61, 72, 85, 57 percent, okay? What that is, is the percentage of cocoa mass. So the higher the number, the more bitter the chocolate. The lower the number, the less bitter the chocolate. Because basically, it's sugar and cocoa mass, which is inside. So if that percentage is higher, that means there's less sugar. And if the percentage is lower, that means there's a little more sugar. So the bigger the number, the more bitter the chocolate, as a general rule. All right. So we've got some melted chocolate here. And this happens to be milk chocolate. And again, it can be milk or semi-sweet, dark chocolate. It doesn't really matter. You're going to take one of the truffles, and you're going to put it in. Okay. So all I'm doing is taking a little bit of chocolate, as you can see, putting it on my glove. So there's a very slight coating of chocolate on the outside of the truffle. So as you can see, I'm making my hands really messy. So if you had someone that could help you with this, it would be very fast and very easy because one person could do one job and the other person could do the other job. So you take it, throw it in the chocolate. So there's a very thin coating on the outside. Okay. You can see this is why I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> and then put it in the chocolate. And then I'll take these off right away. Take a fork, and you're going to throw it in the cocoa powder before the chocolate sets. OK, there we go. Now, take a couple forks. And again, it's a lot easier if you do this by hand. With the forks, it's a little, uh, it's a little cumbersome. So you're going to take these truffles. You're going to move them over. And what I recommend is put these in the refrigerator for five or 10 minutes. What will happen is the truffle chocolate will set, get rid of the excess cocoa powder. So there's a very thin, thin dusting of cocoa powder. And then your finished truffles are ready to go. So I will take these. I'll put them in the fridge for just a couple of minutes. And I'll be right back. OK, we've let these chill in the refrigerator for just a couple of minutes. So the outside chocolate shell has set up. So as you can see. They look pretty much the same from the outside, but the difference is one is going to be soft all the way through, and the other one that we dipped and we rolled in the chocolate is going to have a very small, slight, hard chocolate shell. So we'll add a little bit of texture and a little bit of interest to the truffle. Hope you enjoyed our uh, raspberry chocolate truffle lesson today. Have a great day. Bye-bye. There's always so much happening at College of DuPage. Be sure to watch images every month to stay on top of it all. I'm Rio Almaria, and have a safe and happy holiday.